Um, where did that place Tohu and Tefiti? Tohu and Tefiti were based at, just around at Warea inland at a place called Ngā Kumukumi. They also established a satellite or a sister um, community at Kekeua, which is up Wataroa Road. Those of you who know the area, which is just past Pungarehu Wataroa Road, if you go up that road, you come to a, a large flat area at, at a place called Kekeua. Um, in, in 1865, five years after they had, well, almost five years after they had established it, a la very large uh, group of uh, British soldiers, so professional soldiers under the leadership of Captain Gold and uh, Shute um, and a number of others, McDonnell I think, um, came through and they attacked uh, Ngā Kumikumi in Kekeua. They killed quite a few people and then they, they sent them inland, even though there were no um, military fortifications and they were living in, in peace. So they forced them inland. The people under Tohu and Tefiti moved inland and they sought refuge there. They waited until the troops had moved. The troops came around and they destroyed all of the communities around the coast. There was a large uh, Ngāti Moyahu settlement next to the sea that we used for fishing and for gathering seafood at a place called what we now refer to as Te Ikaroa, which is you go down Pumerehu Road, um, all along that area there, there's houses there now, it's on a little, uh, it's a reserve, and um, that, was, that was one of their main settlements for gathering seafood. Um, but most of their, their cultivations were further inland. So they regrouped, they went inland, and then they came out and they re-established another community. Um, you came up um, Pariaka Road, when you, when you came up off the coast road and you came up about 500 metres, when you, once you come off the main road and come up Pariaka Road, about 500 metres, look to your right into the paddock. There's a big uh, elbow in the, in, the riv, in the river here, in the stream, Waitotoroa. That was their main settlement called uh, Waikoko. Waikoko. And they began building another, another community there. Again, no fortifications. And, um, and focusing on cultivations. However, when the government found out about the community that they were building there, um, uh, they had only just started, they, they, um, and the word got around because of the cultivations, they had only just started putting in their cultivations in November. Um, uh, Captain Gold from Opunake, who was leading the troops that, that were stationed in Opunake, brought a large contingent of soldiers and, and attacked that community, killed quite a few people and destroyed all of the crops and the people of, of, uh, of Waikoko, you know what happens, what's their strategy? Escaped in there. They escaped in there. Uh, they escaped well past here at Pariaka. Uh, but it just so happened that um, um, Te Whiti's half-brother was living in this area. I, I haven't talked about Te, Te and Te Whiti yet, so I'll, come to the, I'll, I'll do that now. We know that um, uh, Te Whiti o Rungo Mai's um, uh, mother, mother, mother is closely related to, to your whānau. Uh, Rangi Kawau is all for all intents a, a, a Moyahu. Her brothers took on the name Moyahu as their surname. She simply was known as Rangi Kawau. That's Te Whiti o Rungo Mai's uh, mother. Um, so she's Ngāti Moyahu Tuturu. She's the, she's the um, daughter of Te Whetu Matarere Moyahu. Not your fellow in the Whakapapa, but a two generations ahead of that. Otherwise known as Te Whetu Matarere. So the Te Whetu that you've got in your Whakapapa, Te Whetu Matarere, takes his name from that Te Whetu Matarere. Kei te pai tira? So, um, so uh, she, her husband, her, her husband was Tohu Kākai, or otherwise known as Hone Kākai. Um, he was from uh, Ngāti Te Whiti, which is around the area of Paritutu in New Plymouth, that, where Ngāmotu Beach, all are there, that's where Ngāti Te Whiti is. Uh, and that was, that was his, his uh, iwi, but he also, way back, had a connection with Ngāti Moyahu as well, and Ngā Maha Ngā Taidi through Takarangi and Raumahora. But um, they, um, they had a child, not long after that child was born, um, they were attacked by a large contingent from Waikato. At a, um, some say it was at a, at, as at a place further north, but I've also heard it said that it was when um, Waikato attacked Ōtaka, which is where the cool stores is, where the, 
down by the port, there's the cool stores, it's, it's not there anymore because they quarried the whole pass site that made the breakwater for the port to be made in the, in the bay. But um, at that, with the battle with Dickie Barrett and, and others, they, they managed to fight off Waikato. However, Te Piti, uh, sorry, Rangi Kawau's husband was killed in that battle. Um, and they only had one child who was just uh, a, a young child and his name was Te Viti Oruoma. So Te Viti Oruoma was born on the eve of that battle. We don't know exactly how old. Um, others say he was born six years earlier at an earlier battle which is just on the other side of Bell Block. But um, whichever way we look at it, the main, the main crux of the story is the same. He was born on the eve of that battle and his father was killed in that battle. Um, Rangi Kawo, um, our whanaunga, our kuia, she, she um, headed south. She, she sought refuge with Ngārua Hine. Um, they stayed um, inland at a place called Taikatu. Taikatu. And after a number of years, she ended up marrying a Ngārua Hine rangatira by the name of Nōpera. Uh, where Nōpera Road, if you know, if you know Ngārua Hine, Nōpera Road, Pihama, just past Pihama. This side of Pihama, I think. Um, in that area. And um, uh, when Te Whiti Orungomai's father was killed in that battle, um, not long after that, um, his um, Tohu Kākahi, who was killed, his cousin was born. You know how sometimes you have um, differences in ages in Whakapapa? So his first cousin um, was born the, um, not long after he, he was killed in that battle. And as a result, he was given the name of Te Whiti's father, Tohu Kākai. So the Tohu Kākai of Hariaka gets his name from the father of Te Whiti Orungomai. And even though Te Whiti Orungomai is older, in Māori thinking, Tohu Kākai is more senior because of the Whakapapa. Tohu Kākai is, in Whakapapa terms, an uncle to Te Whiti Orungomai. So in Pariaka, we always look at Tohu Kākai as being the senior to Te Whiti Orungumai. Does that make sense? Um, so they, both of them, and many of, of uh, Ngāti Moyahu settled with our whanaunga of Ngārua Hine in, in, the area, in, that, area, in that area. Um, Tohu and Te Whiti also um, learnt about, um, uh, the, learnt how to read and write, learnt the Bible. You have to learn the Bible to learn to read and write in those days because there was only one book to read. You imagine, going to a library, there's only one book on the shelves and that's the Bible. So they knew the, the Bible cover to cover. If you wanted to learn to read, you, le you read the Bible. Um, they also became very good at economic development. And so when they started to build the economic base here in, in, in Warea, um, Paura Kuhutai and... Um, uh, Aperehama Tereke called Rangi Kawo and, and Tohu Kākai and Te Whiti Orungomai to come back to give support with their knowledge of reading and writing but also negotiation with, with Pākehā traders. Um, that's how Tohu and Te Whiti rose to prominence, is their ability to negotiate, their ability to, to, um, to trade. That was their skill. Um, however, when they were thrown into warfare, uh, they came into this area. I said that Te Whiti Orungomai had a half-brother. Well, Rangi Kawo, his mother, had a second husband after Tohu Kākei was killed, Hone Kākei was killed. Uh, his name was Nōpera. They had two children. Um, the, they had a boy first, and his name was Taikomako. And they had a daughter second, and that was Hinekino. So Hinekino... Um, is, is most prominent in the whakapapa of Fano, such as the Komene Fano, the Komene Fano in this area, and the Niwa Fano. So pretty well all of the Niwa, the, the family who have the name Niwa in Taranaki, are directly related to Hinekino from that line. Um, the, uh, as far as I know, uh, uh, Taikomako didn't have any issue. Um, so he, he was, um, his area was just, when you, when you come in the gate and you see the urupa, you see the two urupa in Pariaka, well the three urupa, the first one is the one that you see with all the headstones, is on the right, ne? 
Well, on the left in the paddock is a, is a large hill with a concrete wall around it. It's, the, it's known as Te Wede Wede. Um, that is the second Urupa, Te Wede Wede. Well, just behind the Te Wede Wede is like a pass site. If you look carefully, you can see the, 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 the um, excavations. On the other side of that and around it was a place of, by a community by the name of Lepanga. So um, Taikomako was based in that area and um, um, also very strongly supported by Ngāti Moyahu. And then the other, the other Urupa is where the road, when you come in and the road splits to the left and the right, to the left, left and the right, well right in the middle there's a, there's a hill with a lot of um, vegetation on it, with a fence around it. That's the first Urupa by the name of Papunga. So we don't let children in that play in that area. There aren't any headstones because it predates um, that was well, that was the first Urupa that they had in this area.